So this is my personal demo system, and I've just logged in. I'm switching between a couple of layouts, and what we see here is low res, low frame rate preview video. Now I'm going to click on a video to bring it up full screen. And when I do that, this switches over to the full resolution stream. So we can see that full resolution stream just by clicking. Uh, and notice too, you have a digital zoom ability. So this is just digitally zooming in on the image. So the quality is going to depend, of course, on what the stream quality was set to. Now I'm going to switch over to my mobile phone and show you the same account. So I'm logged in. You can see that the video looks the same. There's two large and several small. I can swipe left and right through the layouts the same way. And I'm going to open the history browser just by clicking on the video here. So if I just click on this, I want to go and see in history, this is calling up that low res preview and I can just scrub with my finger and I'm using a mouse so that you can see. I can just quickly scrub back. Um, I can also use the buttons for next and previous to very quickly go through the footage. And let's say I want to review this. I can back up a few frames, click play, and immediately I'm getting that full resolution playback. So that's how easy it is to view recorded video. Now it works the same way on the web. One additional feature we have on the mobile is uh, this mini player. So you can use that and go left and right. You can also flip it horizontal uh, and it gives you a different layout as well so that you can quickly zoom in and look at footage that you're playing back. So this is just another way to quickly find video of interest. And here's the, the horizontal view uh, just to show you. Now next up, I'm gonna call up my iPad and the iPad's logged into the same video and once again, same thing, swipe left and right through various layouts. I'm going to use a pinch to zoom so that I can show more or less preview windows on the screen. I click to open the history browser. Same thing, I can scrub, hit play, and get right into that full resolution playback. Now I'm going to switch over to our main demo. In this main demo, I'm going to jump over to the dashboard and you can see our list of devices, our bridges and cameras. Now I can look at quickly at what's offline that shouldn't be, what's off, maybe that's off and it shouldn't be, or it's on a schedule. And then I can quickly look at what's online. And I'm gonna jump right down into the map. And our map gives us the ability to see cameras no matter where they are. Um, in this case, I'm showing cameras all over the world. Uh, we have cameras from Amsterdam to South Africa to Australia and to the US. So I'm just clicking on the camera. It brings up that preview video. Now I could click and go full resolution on it if I wanted, um, or I could open the history browser or settings right from the map. So I'm just gonna type in uh, the name of a street, Sponberg, the first few letters, it takes me right to that street. This happens to be in South Austin and I can see that location. I'm gonna type in this time Amsterdam and go right over to our camera that's in Amsterdam. I'm going to click on it. You can see the preview video from it. And I'm going to also turn on that satellite view so you can see, you know, from the satellite view and from the camera view what you're looking at. Very, very helpful. I'm going to type Brazos for Brazos Street uh, and take us right into the Capital Factory downtown Austin. And I'm going to click on some cameras just to show. Now, this is showing all the floors um, because we support floors from minus 10 all the way to 100. And as with any preview pane, we can click to go to full resolution or open the history browser. Uh, and in this case, I could even open the settings. But I'm going to go back over to the dashboard and, and I want you to see that this carries from the dashboard to tags, to maps, even to our downloads. So whatever I search for here, I can just see instantly. So in this case, uh, I'm going to type elevators. And so as I type elevators, all the cameras that either have the name elevator or a tag elevator or elevator in it in their metadata will appear. And I can go and look through my tags and see which of those cameras, you know, match those tags. I've got nine in this case, and I've got one that's an entrance with an elevator with an entrance. So I, this time I'm going to type entrances, and this is just going to show me all of my entrances uh, across my entire uh, system, what I have available to me. And on the dashboard, you can see here are those cameras. There's the bridges and cameras. I could get right in and do some tweaking or maintenance if I needed to uh, on those. And if I want, and I like this, I can either save this, this entrances 
as a filter or as a layout. So a filter means it's going to search for that every time I call it up. A layout is fixed and I would have to add and delete things from within that layout, but I can start from the layout. The layouts are also really good to use to share uh, with other users so that you can control what a user sees by putting the right things in and out of a layout. So I'll clear that out and it takes me back uh, to where I, where I was, which was entrances. Um, if I click this button, this is where my saved filters are, my saved searches. In this case, I'll choose counting and I immediately see my cameras that have the counting analytic. Um, I can go in and choose by zip code, perhaps. You could save a zip code or just type it in. Let's take a look at line crossing. So I'm going to open a camera that has line crossing. Notice it's got in the, in the right corner a little symbol that represents line crossing. I'm going to open that history browser and you can size it with, to whatever size you'd like. And just I'm going to scroll backwards and zoom into one minute. You can notice there on that timeline that we have the gray and light gray. And that indicates one minute. Whatever we set that to, we can go eight hours, two hours, 10 minutes, one minute. Um, in this case, I'm going to scrub back. And I want to talk about these colors. So the dark blue means the full resolution video is available. The light blue means uh, something triggered motion. So the motion detection is available on every camera. It's built into our system. It doesn't matter what the camera source is. And then this camera has the analytic turned on. And that's indicated in the light green. So light green is where we track analytic objects. And then the dark green is where the analytic triggered. In this case, uh, the people crossed the line. We had two people that crossed that line. So now, what if we want to save it? Well, it's as simple as clicking the Save button, and it automatically highlights the video that we're over. And we can choose to save that. You can download the full resolution video right to your device, or you can choose to archive. Now, archive is an area that allows you to store video outside of retention. Now, every camera in our system can have a retention from zero to five years. You're able to set that in the settings of the camera very easily. Now I'm going to go back and search for our camera, the freight camera. And I'm going to open the settings and just show you that we can set that cloud retention from none all the way up to five years. And we can do this on a per camera basis. And then we can set the resolution of the preview video and the resolution of that full video. So whatever you set the resolution of the full video to paired with the retention is how we do our billing. So you can see that HD1, HD2, 3, 4, we have 5, and HD10 um, as far as billing. It's the same interface no matter what make or model of camera. We can also adjust the motion, set motion regions. We can also control alerts for those regions. So if something happens in that region, we can do, we can decide when to send the alert, when to rearm it, quite a bit of control there. We can turn on analytics. These are the analytics we currently have available now. And we can also control that camera's location. So as you can see here, it's on the 16th floor. And then if it's connected to an Eagle Eye managed switch, we can actually power cycle the port that the camera is plugged into. So this can actually save a truck roll. It's a fantastic feature. And you know, there's just so many fantastic features like that throughout our system. So I'm gonna just cancel and I wanna open the history browser. I'm gonna click the little button to open the history browser. Uh, just like I did with my mobile device, I can just quickly shuttle backwards Forwards and backwards, I can click down and hold to scrub and find that video of interest very, very quickly. I can also change my timeline zoom. Um, on the mobile device, I didn't show it, but you can actually pinch to zoom in that timeline to make it larger and smaller, even on a mobile device. And if you notice at the bottom, we have a calendar. And so this calendar, I can see that was the weekend. These are weekdays. And I can click and drag in that calendar as well. Uh, find the video of interest, click play. Once again, I get my, my playback right away. And I can play it up to eight times speed. So I just played it that it, and I clicked four times speed. Now I'm going to drag backwards to last Friday. And I can tell that's Friday just by looking and find the closest video of interest there. And you can see, you can just scrub very quickly. That low res preview makes it possible. Another feature I want to show quickly is our search feature. So right now I'm just looking at the video and it's showing me a frame every five minutes those little tick marks at the top of the timeline show me what i'm seeing so switching it to videos it gives me the first key image in every video so i can so quickly find what i'm looking for 
In this case, I double clicked on the image I wanted to see. It takes me directly to that point in the timeline and I get that playback right away. And it still remembered that I was in a 4X playback, so it played that back for me at 4X. To quickly share video with another user, you can actually copy your current location to the clipboard and then share that with anyone else that has access to this camera. When they click the shared link, it will open them to this exact point in the history browser. Next up is archive. So archive is an area that you can store footage outside of retention and you get to keep this for the life of your account. I'm going to go ahead and search in this case for stealing and it'll take me right to the location in my archive for the stealing. When I click on the video, I can instantly see that video and bring it full screen. So this video, once again, stored outside of your normal retention per camera. And here's the information about it. You can add a description. You can add tags. You can also share this. Now, the link shows that it's been shared, but this, this link has expired. The link can be set to never expire, or it can be set to any particular date to expire. So you can share this with anyone who does not have an Eli Networks account. So they don't have to have an account to see this video and you can share an entire directory. You can also share additional files in addition to the video so it makes it a really nice place to save and store something for an investigation. And so the last thing that I want to show is users and user settings. So I'm going to go to users, I'm going to type in George and find our user, George Adams, and I'm going to simply click the gear icon to open it. Now, in our demo, we hide the email address. So that's not the actual correct email address. We do that on purpose within the demo user. I'm going to click the gear icon, and we can see that this user has been granted access only Saturday and Sunday. Now, you can set the access period for anything, for any time that you would like. And our default is 24 hours a day. But you can set it for the work hours, non-work hours, or in this case, custom, and give them a different time that they're allowed to log in daily. We can control what cameras that a user sees. So I can quickly search and find cameras, drag and drop back and forth between access and no access. And then I can grant layouts. Now, layouts are the easiest, in my opinion, because you can just grant the user access to a layout, and then you can control what you put in and out of the layout. So that's just kind of quickly an overview of the access for the cameras. Now for permissions, by default, a user is going to get the, the permission to view and download videos, but you can control that. I could turn off the ability for George to download. I could say that he can only view live video if I want. Then there's a lot of other granular control that we can do. We can say, hey, I'm going to let George um, edit PTZ stations, but I'm not going to let him store those presets. I'll just let him control it live. And by the same token, I can say, well, I trust George enough to let him edit my cameras, but with no billing, so he can't add or delete anything. As you can see, there's quite a bit of control over the user. So I'm going to cancel that. And our system is smart enough to know that, hey, we made some changes, and it's prompting us to give us the choice to cancel or save those changes. So now I'm going to go back to a layout, and I'd like to show how easy it is to edit a layout. I'm going to go to my event areas and I'm just going to go up and say edit the layout. When I click edit, I can now drag and drop and rearrange my cameras in any order that I want. I can click to make it different sizes and see this time I'm going to make that camera a little larger and maybe I'm going to drag it over to the left. So you can see it's very, very easy to set up your layouts and put the cameras in the exact precise order that you want. And it's also very easy just to add cameras to that layout. So that's a quick overview of the Eagle Eye Networks VMS system.